in one day or without an alibi, and so the case went stale for a long while. Back to Belfield. He was rarely reported to the police by any of the numerous women he abused mentally and physically for fear of retaliation. However, Jo eventually gained the courage to report him and she had an injunction taken out. Thirty minutes later, he had torn up the injunction, put it in an envelope, put the envelope through the door with the words, Now I'm going to kill you on it. By early 2002, Belfield had 11 children with five different women. Just like a proper six foot one, 19 stone, heavy wannabe stud muffin does, you know? He had started a new car camping company and he had moved to Walton on Thames. A new business and a new home didn't make Belford settle down and behave at all. In fact, it was the complete opposite. 13 year old Amanda Jane Dowler, known as Millie, was the youngest daughter to Bob, a computer consultant, and Sally, a school teacher. They lived together in Hersham, a small village just outside of Walton on Thames. They lived there with her older sister Gemma. Millie was the student at Heathside School in nearby Weybridge, Surrey, where her mum taught maths. She was a fun-loving young girl and she loved music, she played the saxophone. On Thursday, March 21st, 2002, Millie got the train home from school with her friends and decided to allow to stop early at Weybridge train station for a bite to eat with her friends before going on home to Hersham. She called home to say that she was on her way at 3.45, so she left her friends to begin the walk back just after 4, and the last ever sighting of her on her way home, still in her school uniform, was at 4.08pm. Millie never made it home. Just after 7pm, Millie's father Bob began to get worried and called the police. Upon hearing how this was out of character for Millie, Surrey police began to investigate immediately. They dredged the river and they scoured the streets. They interviewed everybody they could find. They appealed on Crime Watch, televised news, printed news, radio. You name it, they tried it. They found no information or clues at all. Her phone, purse, clothes and backpack were nowhere to be found. The investigation into Millie's disappearance was extensive. It was named Operation Ruby and it cost around £6 million in total. No expense or offer of help was spared, in part thanks to the £100,000 reward that was offered for information which could lead to finding Millie, but mainly due to the fear of the missing teenager. This wasn't a usual occurrence for the village, and it was even less usual for Millie. Neighbouring constabularies were called in to assist with the searches, and there were loads of people trying to help, but there were also many, many false leads to filter through, as a direct result of all the appeals and probably the rewards. Unfortunately, nothing led to anything. Some feedback from last programme we did now. Some results, some disappointments, and some that remain mystifying. The biggest response by far was on Millie Dowler, the missing teenager, who was ruled out this morning as the body recovered from the River Thames. So her disappearance remains one of the most baffling cases in Britain. As you may have seen, detectives have taken over 3,000 calls, a big proportion of those from Crime Watch viewers, and the senior officer, Alan Sharp, says he's extremely grateful. The answer might be in there, he says, but to check thoroughly that vast number is going to take time. On the night, one viewer thought he'd found Millie's purse. It turned out not to be hers. Police spent hours and hours interviewing everybody in the vicinity, teachers at a school, fathers of Millie's friends, any sex offenders in the area. They collected an obscenely high amount of potential evidence and took thousands of statements. And of course, they spent an immense amount of time viewing and attempting to enhance CCTV. This was in order to see if they could discover any defining features or number plates of any of the captured vehicles. A red day was found on CCTV images of the scene. It looked pretty suspicious and police were keen to speak to the owner believing they may have seen something that could help. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to track the car or its owner down. Six months later, an unsuspecting couple were picking mushrooms near some trees in the Aitley Heath Wood, Hampshire, when they happened upon a skeleton. Well, perhaps more correctly, parts of the skeleton were found. The body had been left to decay in the woods since early spring, and so the bones had been ravaged and moved around by animals and were found in a variety of different locations within the wood and its streams. No clothes or personal belongings were found. 
Dental records confirmed, perhaps unsurprisingly, that the skeleton was Millie Dowler. Now, Operation Ruby was no longer a missing persons investigation. Now this was a murder hunt. The discovery reinvigorated Surrey Police and they began re-interviewing potential witnesses and carrying out covert surveillance on persons of interest. Nothing additional was uncovered. They had drawn a complete blank. For now. And that's it from me for now. We'll pick this up again next time. Thank you for listening. Speak at you soon.